everybody, Deb Tucker here from Studio 180 Design, and I'll bet you've already figured out the shape that we're going to be addressing today in our tips and tricks. This is a basic building block. It's a square that's divided by two seams, a seam that goes from the corner to the center, and a second seam that goes from the other corner to the same center. And you can see it in all of the quilts that, projects that are behind me here, but there's some confusion with this shape because there are several different names that it goes by, and there's a number of different ways that you're being told to construct that. We're going to examine that today in our Tips and Tricks episode, and then I'm going to share with you my V-Block Trimmer, which is a tool that I designed to give me 11 different size options for constructing this, and a lot of benefits that uh, aren't included in some of the other things that are on the market. So let's take a look at what we've got, and uh, I'm going to drop the camera down here to, the to view our tabletop, and when you see on the table is my first experience with working with this unit. A number of years ago, a very famous quilter named Dorian Speckman wrote a book called Pattern Play. She was truly one of my heroes when um, I was first learning how to quilt because in this book, she proposed a very sound and sensible philosophy. And the philosophy was that if you learned how to make these basic shapes, you could take those shapes, mix them, match them, arrange them, and rearrange them, and literally create a lifetime worth of quilt designs. And these shapes are the driving force behind so many of the tools and the techniques that I've developed under the Studio 180 design name. The shape that we're talking about today is this shape that's right here, and she calls that shape Peaky and Spike. And you're thinking... Well, why is it called Peaky and Spike? Well, when you look at her description of the shape, what you're going to see is she simply named the triangles that are associated with the building of this unit. Remember, this is a square that has a center and two side triangles. She named that center triangle Spike, and she named the two side triangles Peaky. And she just did that so that she could easily identify these in her books and in her instructions. Me... I named this unit a V-block because when you see that unit, it looks like there's a letter V inside the square. And the other name that you're going to see quite frequently with this is called triangle in a square. So don't let names confuse you. The shape is the same. It's a square with those two seams. The seams are going to go from the corner to the center. But what happens is because this is not a 45 degree angle, those seams on the unfinished units don't go right into the corner like our half square triangles and our quarter square triangles. They're offset a little bit. And that's an important element to know and that to be aware of when you're building and working with these units. So let me take a minute. I'm going to clear the deck here, move this out of the way, and I'm going to bring in some patterns and some books that are giving us different ways to go about building those what I call V-block units. Now, if I call them by the wrong name, let me know. I'll try to make it straight here and even, and we'll get the focus adjusted. All right, this pattern I liked a lot. I actually made one of these, and that was in the, in the quilts that you saw behind me. In a recent issue of American Patchwork and Quilting, it's issue number 178, and when we look at the project, we see that there are indeed several V-block units in there. When I look at the instructions, they're telling me to make that unit be six and a half inches with all the seam allowances included, which means it's going to be six inches, but they go on to tell me to build that unit using a paper foundation pattern. Now, that's all well and good. They told me what size this is going to be, but sometimes you may have a project that recommends that you build the, the shape with paper foundation, but they don't actually tell you the size that the shape is going to be. It's quite easy to figure that out. If you're working with paper foundations, simply measure from the inside point to the other inside point, and you'll have the finished size. And if you measure from the outside edge to the other outside edge, you'll have the unfinished or the cut size of your unit. Important elements, no matter what you're going to, um, or how you're going to build those units that make those long, skinny stars. Another pattern, also by Pat, uh, American Patchwork and Quilting, they actually call for two different size options of 
the V block unit. And both of these size options, when I measured them, were kind of unusual. The larger one measured four and a half inches, finished, which meant the unfinished size was five inches, and the smaller one was one and a half inches. And you know, those two sizes, things that finish to half inch increments, are not usually covered in most uh, tools that have been developed for this. As a matter of fact, the my V-Block tool is the only tool that I could find that actually deals with those half inch sizes. And again, paper foundation piecing, if you're going to go ahead and use that, can be very accurate for your project and for the building of your project. Um, it does tend to be a little bit more time consuming. It does tend to be a little bit more wasteful. And what drives me crazy about paper foundation piecing is the fact that I have to sit there at the end and tear out all the paper that's used to create the quilt top. Not for me if I can find another way. There are also authors out there and designers who try to do something different or maybe think that they're trying to, they're building units more easily or with another method. This is one of those samples where they were tr telling me to build this unit with not triangles, but with squares, lots of marking, lots of unusual placement, lots of bias edges around the outside. And this is a, a method that I know right out of the starting gate has no value or no interest for me. But what I really wanted to point out what here were some of the block designs that this designer incorporated that V-block shape into. I was amazed. And some of these I have never even thought of. But I'm going to try some in my future projects for sure. So take the good out of every book and pattern and set of instructions that you see along your quilting uh, pathways. Now, most um, patterns... If they don't recommend a tool, what they recommend is that you build templates for your shapes. And in this particular one, the templates that they have you building, and again, you can measure from point to line to know the finished size of the unit. But this particular set of templates that they're having you build have cropped corners here, 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 and here, and down here as well. And those cropped corners, if you're going to use self-made templates, you should incorporate those crop corners because it's going to make the alignment of your fabric pieces easier if you use those when you're cutting out your fabric shapes. Many of the templates that you're told to create will not have those crop points. These just have flat edges showing you how to cut those shapes out of strips. But what they recommend is that you put a hole in your template at your match points that you can use for pinning in order to be able to get um, higher precision units. Now, the issue when it comes to making templates, there are almost always directions in the magazines that are recommending templates on how to build them. First of all, you have to make sure that the pattern you're using is accurate. You have to then trace accurately. You have to cut out the template accurately. You have to then, if you're going to put the match points in, uh, holes in there, do that accurately. And then, in order to be able to build your project, you must trace each one out individually. Very time consuming, very step heavy. And what happens is the more steps you add to construction, the less accurate you become at the end. And they stress here, the templates must remain accurate because errors, however small, may compound them and cause assembly problems down the road. So template making can be a real challenge to get high precision. Occasionally, a magazine will actually recommend that you use rulers. And there are a good number of rulers that are out there on the market. Some of those rulers, they fall into two basic types. Type 1, which are tools that were developed with the concept that if you cut those triangle shapes that you're building your unit with precise then the units that themselves are going to be precise. And there are a number of tools out there on the market that follow that concept. And then there's a second type of tool which follows the concept that I like to pursue, which is to cut those triangles to build your units slightly oversized. 
so that your unit is oversized so you get to trim them down and clean them up so that once your units are sewn and pressed, you do get high precision. And the V-Block is, is one of those tools. There are several others out there. But all of those other tools have a couple of issues that can be somewhat problematic. Many of those tools have multiple pieces associated with each size. Many of those tools have, uh, oh, limited size offerings. Um, the, the nice thing about my V-Block tool, and I'm gonna slide this over so we can kind of see this tool just a little bit here. The V-Block tool is an all-in-one tool. It has 11 sizes on it from one inch up to, to six inch in half inch increments. It has a slanted side and a square side. And the slanted side is the side of the tool that you use to cut the center and the side triangles. And those shapes are cut using a slanted edge and a guideline. So these two elements are what you use to cut the center triangle, this and a different guideline going north and south. And they're both labeled cut line for the side triangle center of triangle trim line. Those two elements are what are used to be able to build those. And what happens is this shape and this shape are oversized. So when you go to place them together, you don't have to stress about their positioning when you go to stitch. I tell the students in my class using these oversized units that you should basically line up the raw edges and sew with a decent quarter of an inch seam. And I can't tell you when the last time was I heard decent seam. Now, I'm never going to promote poor workmanship, but having a little bit of forgiveness in the construction is going to allow you to take shapes that may not be as pretty as we'd like and trim them down. This is a shape that has not yet been trimmed. One side matches pretty well, but this side doesn't match and this base is way off off kilter. So in order to get it perfect, I'll turn the tool around and use the trim down size. So it's this tool is all in one, the cutting and the trimming. There are guidelines here that will line up with seam lines here, positioning the tool precisely over the oversized unit and allowing me to trim the shape down to an accurate size by trimming this way and this way. And what happens is when I do that trimming, the placement of the lines on the V-block, position that seam so that when you trim the corner, let me find a cutter here, I'll actually go ahead and trim this, just like I do at the shows, and many of you have heard me say this if you visited me at the shows, but when I trim up and I trim across, it cleans up that corner and positions that seam so that when I stitch my quarter of an inch this way and I stitch my quarter of an inch this way, I actually get to keep the points in my project. Now, this is a very brief demonstration of this tool to see the step-by-step -step tutorials on how you cut those center and side triangles and how you do the trim down and how do you figure out what size strips to use is all included on my online video. Uh, so you're gonna wanna go there and take a look at what we're all about. But when you're at my website watching the videos, try and take a look at some of the patterns that we have developed to go along with the V-Block tool. Not only these long skinny stars, Galaxy and um, uh, Doubly Charmed, did you see it behind me here, but we also have a New Year's star, which is uh, one of the options that you can do with the V-Block tool that we call a high-low option. And we have a number of modern patterns that have been developed to go along with this, some that look very unusual. It doesn't look like that traditional V-block at all, but when I raise the camera up here, you're gonna be able to see some of those projects and how pretty they are. And let me tell you, they're nice and accurate as well. And so if you've hesitated to make projects, with this shape in it. Don't. Take some time, investigate my video tutorial, find the tool it's at your local quilt shop if you can, and give it a try. You're going to be able to make big quilts, little quilts, all kinds of different size quilts. And if you join me for a future episode, I'm going to talk about tuckerizing this to a number of different sizes and what I'm looking at and what I'm thinking about. So come join me for that at a later date. But until then, have fun. Give this unit a try. Give my V-Block trimmer a try. And uh, send me photos. I'd love to see what you guys are doing with your 
uh, tucker tools and keep tuckerizing those, those patterns. You're going to get your best results ever. Take care, everybody. See you in a few weeks.